Now I'd like to introduce to you, he's a uh, former Jesuit priest, now born-again Christian. He'll be here for the next seven days. On the eighth day, there'll be a former Catholic nun who speaks in Spanish. Uh, Brother Alberto will be here to interpret for us. I'd like to introduce you now, Dr. Alberto Rivera. To him be the glory. Glory to Christ. What a wonderful Savior. Yes, he is glorious to be here. is a blessing and it is a privilege because I was deprived from the greatest privilege that men ever can have, the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I was deprived for 27 years. You can imagine how much I adore him I worship my Savior and I manifested his love and me to him when I have the opportunity every single day to witness for him and through his gospel. It is a privilege. You have many privileges here too. I already enjoy many of them. Uh, you got the best here. What a wonderful thing. The Lord must be rejoicing. Amen. Yes, I remember in those days that I've been in the greatest cathedral and with the greatest choirs and singing in Latin, precisely the language of the Antichrist. You can see there was no way that you can make it even the Lord smile because I can feel it. I can feel it. I knew not then, but I can now know that I'm sure the Lord was so sad, so sad. But I can now, now I can feel it, that he is rejoicing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a wonderful thing. To be among the living. What a wonderful, what a great thing to be among the living, but what a greater thing to be alive with him. Hallelujah. Yes, it's greater. This is why the women and the apostles were rebuked and called the attention when they were looking for him in the cave where he already had risen. And they told them, Don't, why you look among the dead, the one that lives? I was looking among the dead. Yes, I was looking among the dead. Because every Roman Catholic parish is a cemetery. See? You are wrong when you are looking for cemeteries where there are a lot of crosses and a lot of people physically dead. But there are living people that are dead. More than what the ones that have been buried. A living people. I was one of them. Until I was risen with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. <laughs> See, I was, I was always waiting for 27 years, even as a Jesuit priest, uh, in the resurrection to come. I never knew that you can raise, you can be risen within now. Yes. I'm going to share with you many of these things that have to do with the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I would like to call your attention to the Gospel of Matthew. Nevertheless, before we start this prophetical seminar, I would like to mention from the beginning that we will be uh, talking about, uh, during the first three days, uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, in chapter 24 of the Gospel of Matthew, the prophetical sermon of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then before, I'm going to brief you and the many things that has happened since uh, my testimony was revealed as the Lord has commanded me to do and, and bring about these things that were hidden from the Church of Christ, from the Christian people and from the Roman Catholic people too. Now, let me uh, call your attention to chapter 24 of the Gospel of Matthew and read for you three verses. Uh, chapter 24, I'll read to you from verse uh, 4. Actually, uh, let me read you verse 5, and then 
uh, in order to use and redeem the time well enough as much as we can, we would like to read certain verses instead of reading all the context. And then you have some work at home to do reading the context that you can understand better what I brought to you this evening and the following evenings. Uh, chapter 24, verse 5, and there we read the word of God. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And then verse 23. Then, if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. And 24. For there shall arise false Christs, in plural, and false prophets, and shall shew great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. I knew both ways around these prophecies. I was deceived. And I did try for 27 years of Jesuit, Roman, Catholic, priesthood. I have tried to deceive the very elect. As a matter of fact, that is why I was taken oath as a Jesuit under oath and induction. Only, only with the purpose to deceive, if it were possible, the very elect our Lord Jesus prophesied here and if it were not because these prophetical signs that I have read from to you this evening three main prophetical signs this one in verse 5 the second in verse 23 and the third in verse 24 we will be speaking about these three prophetical signs of the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ how I knew about this is almost impossible to even go and be very specific about. There is so much. There is so much about. Nevertheless, in these publications you have read some of the things that were so much a part of my conversion and then of my salvation in Christ. But I would like to brief you about several things. In this introduction of this prophetical seminar, I want for you to explain something about these publications that you are not aware of. First, these publications are not all what will be coming. This is only just a brief part of what will be coming. For those who already thought that in 1979, when Alberto came out, that was all, they receive a big surprise when they saw Double Cross coming behind. And then for those who already tried so hard, in so many ways, and so many, using so many methods and peoples and organizations and governments to stop even for any more from coming out, they were shocked when they came out and saw the Godfather. And they are still very nervous using of all the uh, aspirins and the pharmacies and, and drug stores and all kind of uh, uh, calmants uh, or you call uh, whatever drugs they can use in order to calm their nerves down when they knew there was another coming, the force. And they keep trying until now, until this evening, they keep trying. But they have another surprise. The fifth number is coming next month. Call the prophet. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Certainly, we live in the most privileged time in history. Certainly, the most horrifying times too. But you Christian people, and those who are not Christian this evening, place closer, close attention. You Christian people are the most privileged people in the entire world. Certainly the most suffering, certainly the more persecuted, the most rejected ones. 
but the most privileged one. You are being witness and being instruments of the greater things than not even the prophets were able to be recipient of. You are witnessing now the things that the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ and Christ our Lord himself was not even witness in their very times and we do witness now in our partakings of the fulfillments of his prophecies Amen. certainly you are privileged people there is a lot and this is my trust and confidence and my joy and crisis the joy of my salvation and that joy increase as the days go by and that joy giving me more strength as the times go by and the opposition increase, then I become stronger. Yes. They can burn me alive and I'm sure that I have the strength of the Lord himself that I'll be able to speak while I'm being burned. And the ashes will speak. And the ashes will witness of what Jesus Christ has done in my life. Oh yes, they will. I have that confidence so secure. Because I know where he brought me from. Some people see me and they said they were expecting to see a big tall Man, even a fat one, maybe big, one heavy, and uh, and maybe a machine gun with me. Very ugly, awful, terrible, a criminal. So you see how evil this man is. He's a liar. He's a deceiver. You can see the face of the liar and deceiver. All the sex and the lies are there. You can see how ugly he is. All the evil things that he has done against so many good Catholic people is there. He hates them all. He hates all the Catholics. He hates all the Protestants, all the Pentecostals. He hates everybody. He is against everything. And to everything he said that the Holy Mother Catholic, Roman Catholic Church is the cause of all our evils. How evil he can be. Well, all this come to this. You see, I am 5.5 and I weigh 115 pounds. I many times have a hard time trying to kill a fly. But I don't understand what is all the worry about. What is all the fear? What is all the commotion? Before even the Lord has set me free, He has set free millions and millions and billions of people around the world throughout the centuries and many priests to place myself in their place many thousands upon thousands of priests even jesuits they were brought by the power of jesus christ out to light from darkness and through all the centuries they have written books they have spoken against it they have exposed this great horror, this mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. They have done so throughout the centuries. But why me? It's not me, beloved. Why even not only institutions and organizations and denominations and consuls and assemblies and conventions of the nomination has even gone as far as officially making decrees and proclaiming declarations and banning this publication for on their midst and terrifying bookstores owners and treating them 
and even burning their bookstores down. Why? What is here that make that so holy mother Catholic Roman and Apostolic Church fear so much that she has place and function and she has place to work every every mean at her disposal from the very deceive people among every denomination to the very governments of the earth. Laws has been passed to ban these publications in more than 19 countries until now. Last week, coming closer, not only in Canada and Philippines and South Africa and many other countries, but last week alone in the state of Wisconsin, a resolution was passed by the legislature of the state to ban the publications. The resolution is there in the floor already. The first stay in the nation is coming closer, is getting closer. But why? If it's all this is a lie, if it's all this is the product of deceit, and I'm a liar and I'm a deceiver, why to worry so much about deceiver? If I cannot prove and give evidence of what I have said, of what I am, of what I was, then who is giving proof and evidence? Let me tell you, they are helping me in doing so. And they don't know it. So confused and so desperate they are. Praise the Lord Jesus. Certainly, we are privileged, most privileged, most privileged people. The enemy himself of Christ and his gospel has given proof and evidence of who you are, who I am, and who he is within ourselves. Because the one that is within us is greater and bigger than the one in the world. The one in the world is recognizing the one in us. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. Then you question and ask for proof and evidence. I'll give you more than you can afford. As a matter of fact, you do have already enough. But there's two problems. They were with me before I was set free. Blindness and drunkenness. A blind cannot lead another blind. And a drunk cannot lead another drunk. It's the same spiritual matter that were revealed in this Holy Bible. Listen well. Jesus spoke about the blind. The Holy Spirit brought for the first time the other ingredient of drunkenness in the book of Revelation. He says she has made drunk the inhabitants of the earth. Uh -uh. How many people? Oh, some people even come to me and say, but I never was Catholic. I said, believe it or not, you were. Oh no, I was raised Pentecostal. Oh, you were Catholic, all right. There are many expressions of Catholicism. You don't know it, but it's even prophesied. She has made drunk the inhabitants of the earth. That is that religion that even Mr. Walter Martin do not call a cult. What I'm saying? Well, I just happened to mention one of the many. How is that? How in the world when the Holy Spirit himself placed that central attention around her and her alone How I'm going to dare to be just entertainment with Jehovah's Witness and, and all the branch around. She is the mother. Some people say, but don't you speak about nothing else that a Roman Catholicism? But where he brought me from? You are not dealing with just a religion. You are not dealing with just a cult. 
you are dealing with more than that. You are dealing with the pride of the Antichrist himself. That is. Then, he has a peculiar position in prophecy. And we have to know this because that was my alarming cry in the days of my blindness and drunkenness as a Jesuit Roman Catholic priest. Unless I was awakened by these powerful prophecies, by these revelations of the Lord Jesus Christ himself, I could not even know that I will be able someday to be free. But I have to pay close attention to what Jesus had to say. Now, we are speaking of three prophetical signs that, as you know, in the book of Revelation, we have very well uh, known as, I mean, in the book of Matthew, we have known very well as the prophetical sermon. And allow me to go back and read for you in 24, do not lose your New Testament and this book, back into birth uh, three. And then we will read better from there. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of a coming and of the end of the world? Three questions in one. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. That means that there is a conspiracy. I mean, a real conspiracy. And Jesus knew about it. And there is no two conspiracies, even so that you deal with more than 100, perhaps. <laughs> there are conspiracies all around the corner. But the fact is, there is only one conspiracy and one conspirator. One conspiracy is the program, the plan that that conspirator has inspired through the century. The spirit of the Antichrist. The Pope has come to be that conspirator in the world. The papacy has come to take the place of that spiritual power in the air in order for this conspiracy to work out through economics, through politics, through the military, through religion, and so on and so on. In order for that conspiracy to take place in every area of our life, in the life of the world, that spirit make a recipient, a person, a special one person in the earth. And now we know why. That is, in the center of the earth, one particular place, a place, geographically speaking. Now, those who have seen this, see what in this picture here? What do you see here is horrifying shadows of devils and evil spirits. Actually, it's not even, the painter will never be able to even draw the horrifying pictures of evils, spirits, and demons. He will never, no painter will be able ever. But at least here, we were trying to give an idea of how horrifying these powers are. That literally speaking, you can understand that where they are functioning and from where they come to work, in order to place at work this conspiracy and our work against the church of Jesus Christ and against the Lord himself, against Christ himself and his gospel. In order that you know this, I was able to persuade the painter that he must place these horrifying creatures here in one particular place, not only in one particular place geographically speaking, but even architecturally speaking, in one particular building, in one particular place of that particular building. And that is the Basilica of St. Peter. And that is what you see here. This is the main nave where the main altar is. And there is where only the Pope can office and perform Mass. 
then what we have here is the center of something and even the name of that particular place already have revealed where that dynasty where that antichrist shall come from will be the lord is very gracious he has not only given us the prophecies he has given us all the details that we know by the details physically speaking where spiritually speaking that prophecy is going to be fulfilled here listen to this the name vaticanus in latin means in latin as well as in english or in spanish he means the center of a divination yes the place it's not a place or a center the definition as good transliteration from the latin root is the the center of a divination what that means is not other if that is the center of the divination, then we understand even much better why the Holy Spirit, as I was being convicted in the days of my confrontation as a Jesuit priest, now you understand what Jesus Christ was doing with me because he knew where I was. I was in the inner core of that conspiracy. I have to have all the details. Otherwise, there is no power that could ever lose me from that place. That started with my conviction under the power of the Holy Spirit through the teachings of Christ. I was enlightened by the Spirit of the Lord Himself to understand that even what I know as a didactical, as an intellectual definition of that word means more than just what I all the time assume. Well, our explanation for, as a, for a Jesuit, when they know that that term means center of a divination, is very logical. Jesuits are good for logic. I was doctorate in logic too. But Christ free me from that too. Praise his name. Listen well. Once you deploy logic and defining the term he could not give you even no opportunity intellectually for your even reason to reason about it. He said, do you know why? He's the center of a divination because here was the center of the Roman Empire. And then we as the Church of Christ came here and replaced it and we have conquered and assumed the power of that place. <gasps> well, you almost believe it. Not men deceive you. Jesus is saying and told me in those days that there was one thing in particular that men will deceive you. The men will deceive me. One thing in particular. Certainly they will deceive you of anything they can if they are serving the devil himself. That is the purpose of serving the devil, is to deceive of any cost and anywhere and any place. It can be buying an insurance policy as well as having a savings account. They will deceive you. They are deceiving people. You cannot trace no place throughout the entire society where in any institution, in any, I mean any, from the government down, in any institution, regardless of how even religious is, where already in transactions and manipulations the seed is present. And that is, they will deceive you, but there is one particular thing. Even so, even all this performance of deceit will try to do something to deceive you about that particular thing. As a matter of fact, there is so much of deceit that finally you will not make difference at all. You could not see the real deception. You could not discover because there is so much that will try to cover up the real purpose of deceit, of deceiving you from one particular thing that they will insist. And no politically speaking, not economically speaking alone, not educationally speaking, not militarily speaking, no, no, they will do it religiously speaking more so than any other area of life. 
Yes. They will deceive you. He said, take heed that no men deceive you. About what? Now, that is the particular, that was my question. That is how my mind was challenged by the power of God in that very moment. He said, about what? For, oh, that is, for many. Every bit of the seed and the world will try to cover up one fact first. Many. Everything in history, even through the perversion of the prophecies and the book of Revelation, that the Jesuits already took good care to penetrate even the church, the heart of the church of Christ, already as part of the counter-reformation, of the Protestant counter-reformation to the Council of Trent. Already the Jesuits took good care of even penetrated, infiltrating the very heart of the church to introduce all these false prophecies that will cover up this particular deceit. Where the Antichrist shall come from? Among whom? Today is even more sophisticated. Today, you go into the same book stores that they don't carry Alberto, huh, and you will find many books speaking about the Antichrist. And they'll give you all kind of versions about the Antichrist. Oh yes, even Nikita Khrushchev. And to be more patriotic, more American, they'll tell you Kissinger. <laughs> he is the Antichrist, some people say. Don't you see his name? And now, to be more up to date, they say Ronald Reagan. You see, even his name fit within 666. But you see, even so there is truth that can be used and is being used to deceive you. Let me put it clear and now. It's not only the lie that's going to be the subject or the channel to deceive you, but it's going to be the truth, the perverted truth. And whatever is truth, it will be perversion of the truth in order to deceive you about this particular revelation, prophetical revelation of Christ himself. Listen. For many shall come for a thing that is prophetical sign, this first prophetical sign revealed to us. Now Jesus could answer to these triple questions in many different ways. He could specifically answer one by one. But around everything that I have requested here, Jesus only called their attention to one fact. To a particular act of deceit that will take place about one particular mystery. The fact that the Antichrist shall not come by himself or shall not come out of nothing. And your books, even in those bookstores, are full of this nothing. Anyone can be an Antichrist. And books are being written as never before about the Antichrist of everybody. Even Jim Jones was an Antichrist. Well, the poor fellow could not qualify for that too. No. Oh, what do you mean? You need qualifications to be an antichrist. No. You thought that anyone could be an antichrist? Uh -uh. It's not that way, beloved. At least it was not in the mind of Jesus Christ. No, the antichrist. That Antichrist need qualification. As a matter of fact, before he's known as such, he will have centuries of preparation. This is why he's coming out of a dynasty. Oh, a dynasty first. Before he even appear. His own spirit will put to work a dynasty from where he will shall come from. A dynasty. People first. No place now. People. 
He will be a group of people. He said, how many? He said, many shall come in my name. What that means is that this is the first qualification for the Antichrist. He had to meet. So my father, it was not even, not, not the devil who presented that. It's Jesus that had decree how he shall appear. Because when the devil is not able, with all his power and all his wisdom, with all the authority that he has, I even saw he's under the authority of God Almighty. <laughs> and beside knowing what he know, he know nothing at the end of the time because before he speak before he do something or perform something God already know a way ahead of him but when God wants to perform something wants to reveal something the devil do not not nothing so my father he do not understand even prophecies you were given too much credit to the devil because that happened to me. I was serving him. I know how much he knew. And how much he knew not. Yes. The Lord himself revealed in this prophecy the very conspiracy that otherwise could never be known to men. He was already just dead in the book of Genesis. That was nothing new. He was already way back. Two principles were deployed by the devil himself in the book, in the book of Genesis and in the Garden of Eden. Two principles. Listen to one. The two principles that the just order has been established on it. Two principles. There are the two principles and two different manifestations that is where the Roman Catholic institution is based upon. These two principles were this. One he called Eve and said, now that is how I was brought by the Holy Spirit back in Genesis to understand even this. A step by step, I was knowing what I knew intellectually, what I knew through the training and preparation as a Jesuit priest. Now, the Holy Spirit was telling me that God already knew about it. He was here. And I knew not. These two principles were deployed by Satan when he come to even said, God has told you people not to eat of the fruits of the trees, plural. Fruits, trees of the garden. That was not what God said. Nevertheless, he used the same revelation of God. The same decree, not a different one. That was very proper of the Jesuit. That was the counter reformation based upon. Certainly, from before the reformation, before the Holy Spirit finally broke through all the darkness that she has imposed throughout the centuries to the point that almost has placed the church of Christ on their ground without even knowing where Christians were in the Middle Ages. You can hardly know, you can hardly find a Christian because they all were on their ground in Europe and Africa and wherever place. Some people said that the Christians came to be free after the emperor became a Christian. First, the emperor never become a Christian. Second, there was never no Roman emperor to become a Christian. That is part of your distortion in history too. But nevertheless, third was the preparation for this cover-up. Because from there is when finally the many start coming. And the person of the Emperor Constantine the Great, the first to come out and use the same principle that devil used there. First, the perversion of the revelation of God. He perverted, he twisted. God spoke in singular, he came and said plural. 
y si es dar. Second, as a result of the perversion, you always will have something coming out. As a result of that perversion of God's decree, what came about? The devil came with a noise story, and he never, he always went back and appealed to the decree of God. He said, oh, well, maybe I made a mistake, all right, but don't you see? And went back to the decree. Don't you see that why he said that you should not eat from that particular tree and that particular fruit of the, of the good and evil? Do you know why? And he went back to God's decree. Do you know why? Because the day that you do it, then you shall become as God. Beloved, that is the foundation of the revelation of the Antichrist. An Antichrist or the Antichrist is not one that is against Christ, is the contrary, is the one that takes the place of Christ. What the devil already from the beginning was telling here and told then later the Holy Spirit to me in order to awake my consciousness is that that papacy was that dynasty that Jesus spoke and the devil already have in mind by the time that he deployed these two principles. Perversion of God's revelation, second tradition developed from there, a religious tradition. You see, not against God, no, 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 in favor of God, but nevertheless, as a result of the perversion of God's revelation. That is your Roman Catholic tradition. Baptismo! Oh yes, what a beautiful thing. What, a, what evil is in baptized on a child? What evil? Well, you have two things there. Starting from the beginning of seven sacraments. Starting with the first. Baptismo of infants. There is a child. An innocent child. He could be even on the board, but nevertheless, the same principles apply. The decree of Jesus Christ in Mark chapter 16, verse 15, given to his apostle after his resurrection is, Go ye into the world and baptize every baby. But how come you were the product of the blood? If you were Roman Catholic and you are today a Christian, that is what you were. You were the product of the perversion of the gospel before you were the product of the gospel. If you are still a Roman Catholic, you are still the product of that perversion. You need to know the gospel now. You have known the perversion of the gospel, but not the gospel. Said, what is the difference? Oh, there is a difference. Listen well. Go ye into the world and preach the tradition. My tradition. Or your tradition. The apostles' tradition. Because all is there according to the Council of Trent. Above this Bible, as a matter of fact. Regardless. And against that. The reading revelation of God. Now you know it well. You can still be in a Roman Catholic. And you can have any opinion that you like to have. And you can even say that you are a Christian. I can prove to you that you are not. You can still say that even your Roman Catholic parish priest. He is so wonderful that he preaches the gospel every day. Now you know it well. You can still be in a Roman Catholic and you can have any opinion that you like to have. And you can even say that you are a Christian. I can prove to you that you are not. You can still say that even your Roman Catholic parish priest, he is so wonderful that he preaches the gospel every day. And he is even more than that. He is speak even in tongues. But nevertheless, he's performing mass. 
and he believed it. He's a priest. What that means is that he believed that he is another Christ. He better believe it, or he could not be a priest, nor according to canon laws, as we will see with details in the future days. He can do wonders and perform wonders and signs, and still that I can send him back where he came from in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I can send him back to the devil. This is where he's coming from. In the name of Christ, he come from the devil. Listen. For many shall come in my name. These two principles that were deployed there, they were at work even among the Israelites. There were signs of this principle working through. And they came, and Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, confront the Pharisees, confront the Sadducees, confront every one of the scribes of the this time, and the temple, and the parks, and the street. And what he confront? He confront the manifestation of these two principles under one name traditions. Chapter 15 of the Gospel of Matthew. I could not believe it. I was being confronted myself. I was being brought under conviction. Jesus is speaking to me as he spoke to them. I cannot be the same. I said I'm not even a Jew. I have, well, I did have blood. I do have blood, Jewish blood. But I will say, I am not one of them. Lord, you know that they reject you. And I try to justify myself before that conviction that was coming to me. He said, no, 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 no. That cannot be. I am not the same. They, they were evil. They kill you. I cannot. You see, they kill you. And do you know why? Because their tradition. And they were not political traditions. They were not scientific traditions. They were not educational traditions. They were religious traditions. Built upon and against it. The written revelation of God. They were not the result of God's revelation even. They were against it. Chapter 15 of the Gospel of Matthew. That was that confrontation that already prepared his way to the cross. He already revealed what was their problem. He said, Listen, because you prefer to fulfill the traditions of your father, you have broken the law by the traditions of your father. And now, the result of this is that you can call upon God, that you can call upon the Messiah, that you can still believe in the prophecies of the prophets concerning him, that you can still believe in, in the Spirit of God, that you can still believe in, in the kingdom of God, that you can still believe in, in the promised land, that you can still believe in everything that he has said. But let me tell you, even when you worship me, you worship me in vain. Now, how come? I was baptized Catholic. What that means, I was made a Christian. Now, he cannot speak this about me. No, he did. He spoke about me. He spoke about you. The fact is that you were the recipient of what these Jews were. I'm so close, so well has been revealed that even the liturgy of the Roman Catholic institution, their dogmas and canon laws, and consuls, and even vestments of priests and cardinals and bishops and popes, they all come from the combination of paganism and Judaism. The purgatory, a combination of Judaism, bravo, of the Jewish tradition that amalgamated from the pagan religions. The book of Maccabees. Yes, 
the same tradition, the blind then, before the person of Jesus Christ, the same tradition, they made them so drunk, uh, that even when they read the prophecy, they could not detect, they could not know, they could not see, they could not hear, when the master spoke, and they were hoping for him to come, but he was, they could not realize that he was. Tradition is a bad business. It's an evil one. And it's a powerful one. Take heed that not men deceive you. Now you know how. A particular one thing. One much effort. Beside the cover up of all of these combinations and perversions of God's revelations throughout the centuries. One special purpose to cover up that dynasty. For many shall come second in my name. Oh, how come Nikita Khrushchev could come in the name of Christ when he knew not even nothing about it? How come Ayatollah Khomeini? He said that Allah is before Jesus. How come any, I mean any person, like this madman in London, that British one, the founder of the new era, now that is another threat of the Jesuits, finance and pay by the Jesuit order. Oh yes, there's a lot of antichrist all around. But you see, the same very things are protecting the real Antichrist. And some people are helping. Some people are helping. Some books are helping. Some preachings are helping. Some teachings are helping. Yes, there is an army out there helping these cover up. Many. There is a society, a group of cardinals called the Cardinal College. Let's go one by one. And this Cardinal College is a very sophisticated group of cardinals. Very special ones too. Oh, how much I rejoice in the Lord, not only for what he revealed to me, but how much I rejoice that I have the freedom, the authority, and the power to speak about Roman Catholic doctrines and teachings, the very things that I was not able to teach, not even to the Roman Catholic people, being a Jesuit priest. Can you imagine this? Most Catholics ignore what is behind the liturgy that they practice. As a matter of fact, 95% of 800 millions of people. Listen. That is called the Cardinal College. In order to be a member of the Cardinal College, as right now, one American, very prominent, has been appointed the last days. From New Orleans. As a matter of fact, with Jewish blood, the Jewish blood is getting closer and closer into the picture. He got to be appointed by the Pope first, but who told the Pope to appoint that man? Oh, that is another matter. There is a Jesuit general. It's called the Black Pope. It's not because he dressed black. No. It's not because he is black. No. Mm -mm. There is a third factor more important than all this. There is a more deep mystery. He is the black pope because he keep in the shadows of the pope. He is behind that pope. He is his shadow. The Pope walk, the Pope sleep, and the shadow of the Jesuit general 
is within. It's a mystical power. He cannot do what he please, even when he speaks cathedra, because by the time that he wants to speak as cathedra, that according to the definition of the consuls, that means that the Pope speak under what they call infallible power. What that means is that it's God himself who speak. Already the Jesuit general has brought what he is going to say as cathedra. Then I was part of the work. I was part. I was not only spying Protestants as most Jesuits are in that work and has been in that work since they are placed on their oath and induction. No, 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 not just to spy Protestants and spy governments and spy uh, all the situations in the world, but spy the clergy, spy the cardinals and the bishops, what they speak, their speeches, their interviews, what they declare what they, the conversations they hold, their, their friends, the people who they deal with. Oh, yes. Oh, Rome have no confidence in no one. It trusts no one, no even herself. Then, suddenly, after years of espionage, Behind that cardinal, they bring a dossier, a file of some thousand, thousands of pages of a study of that person three generations back. From three generations back. Where they came, their ancestors came from, who they were, how Catholic they were, and so on and so on. Were Jews, were Muslims, were what? Every detail, three generations back. And then the present history. If that study will culminate then for the decision of the Jesuit general to tell the Pope we need this man in the Cardinal College. And there an appointment come. The man is called to be member of the Cardinal College. What, how many Cardinals do you know in the entire world? Well, there are thousands of Cardinals all over the world. But do you know how many in the Cardinal College? How many Cardinals are? Well, according to canon laws, it should be 70 cardinals. That is the official number. It could not surpass that number. Because they try to imitate as everything else what Jesus has spoken. 70 disciples. They recognize that the Pope is Christ. Then Christ has to have 70 disciples. But that is very difficult. Throughout the centuries, you can hardly see a time in history that they could have 70 cardinals in the cardinal college while there are thousand cardinals all over the world. Why? So difficult to get there. i just given you some ideas about why. That cardinal, once there is appointed to be a member of the cardinal college, anybody thought that maybe any cardinal could be, come and be a pope there. But they, he had to be there first. Then once he's called, he knows that once he's a member of the Cardinal College, that means he's a member of a dynasty. That means the di dynasty that they recognize they are the princes of the church. The princes of the church. Listen now to the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus said, for many shall come in my name. Many speak about, then what? Someone isolated from someone else? No. Many is a speaking about a group, a particular group of people. They will be doing and performing and coming in the same manner. In the same manner. Ah, shall come in my name. They won't be here and there. They will come from one place, they will come under one name, and they will perform one task alone. And this is the task. Listen well. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. 
Now, this is the third qualification. You have the first, many, the dynasty. Second, the cover-up and the name of Christ. Third, the personification of Christ. This is personification. He's not the Pope, someone that comes just only his name. That is a cover-up. By the time that you ask a Catholic and you are asking yourself, what do you know about the Pope? Who he is? He said, well, just a man. Well, he don't believe that he is just a man. He said, my father, he is Pope because he doesn't believe that. He is Pope because he believes there is Christ on earth. That's why he is Pope. He is Pope because he was given the first title among others as Christ prophesied 1900 years ago. He is titled the minute that he is chosen between the two cardinals that the general Jesuit appoint to be called from that cardinal college. He then is titled with one title and is the first title. Two S. Vicarius Fili Dei. Now, I ask you now, who is the Antichrist that anyone has written of beside the Pope that is given that title? Who is the Muslim that is given that title? Who is the Buddhist? Who is the Brahman? Who is the Hare Krishna? Who is the Jehovah Witness? Who is the Mormon? Who is the witch that is given that title by the time they are ordained or called to whatever functions they are called to perform in the midst of their cult? Who is? There is only one person, a Pope. And there is only one place, the Vatican. Tu es vicarius fili dei. I am sure that you have already found the many answers, not only one, the many answers throughout this part of my testimony this evening. But you will find more. But before we are dismissed this evening, until we are back tomorrow, I want to give you the opportunity this evening under what you have known now to take a serious decision for your life. The Lord Jesus has taken the most serious decision for you. Before he manifested his love, taken your place and the cross, he already spoke in favor of your freedom here. Your freedom is coming. Make available that freedom now as you come to the Lord Jesus Christ if you are not a Christian this evening, be one. Right now. Let us stand up. We pray, the people of God pray, and listen well to this. You have a father that is a Catholic. You have a mother that may be a Catholic. You have a sister, a brother. You have relatives that are Catholics. You have a wife, a husband that is Catholic. Do you know that now you must pray for their freedom? You must pray for their freedom. You knew that Catholicism was something else. So my father, you always look to Catholicism as a Christian church, as a Christian religion, they say. But that is not the way that Jesus showed me. It's not the way that he's showing everyone that wants to be free, truly free. Come to him this evening. As we do pray, I invite you to come forward. Don't be afraid. I want to pray for you as you come forward this evening. Now, don't hesitate. Don't take more chances. Come to your freedom in Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Embrace Him, confess Him, profess Him right now this evening. I invite you to come as we pray. And the invitation will be coming in a standing few minutes more. As I pass on the microphone to keep the invitation going, you have still been waiting and waiting. He has been waiting for you to come. If you are not a Christian this evening, regardless whether you are a Catholic or not, you are affected by 
she has made drunk the inhabitants of the earth. You need to be free from this power of the Antichrist. You will never be free unless you are found in Christ himself. You always will be affected, regardless, again I say, whether you are Catholic or not, if you are not a Christian, you will be, you are being affected by that manifestation of the spirit of Antichrist in the papacy and the Pope of Rome. You can see how affected this nation is being right now. You can see how affected this country is being already. The economy is going down today. The political security and safety is going, regardless of all the weapons, is going down. Someone is, has on their mind all these factors. And this is the Pope of Rome. Five meetings has he in the past seven months with the president of this nation. Five meetings. Only one time in history, in the history of this country and the world, that has happened. That a Pope and a leader of a nation has met five times in less than seven months. Doesn't tell you anything. It better tell you that you need to be free and protected and Christ and Christ alone. Don't go on looking and searching for Christ. You said, I believe in Christ. But you must bear proof and evidence of your belief in Christ. And they are not in tradition. The only proof and evidence that you ever could have, they are here in the gospel of Jesus Christ. They are in the body of Christ that was given for you. You come forward as we keep praying and the invitations keep open to you, not for too long. You can come forward. Don't hesitate to come. Don't be ashamed. I can be ashamed of many things, but I will never be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You do it now for your own salvation in Christ. Come forward and receive him as your personal Savior and your Lord and King. There we are. Yes, I have challenged the state. I have challenged the authority.
who came forward now just repeat this prayer say with all your heart to the living God and your soul will be saved my Lord and my God have mercy upon my soul a sinner I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God that he died upon the cross and shed his blood for the forgiveness of all my sins and that he rose again from the dead by the power of the Holy Ghost and now sits at the right hand of God knowing everything that I do Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Wash away all my sins with your precious blood that you shed for me. I accept you by faith into my heart as my personal Savior. And I know you have heard me and I know you have answered me and according to your word your holy Bible I know that I am saved and I thank you Lord Jesus for saving my soul just raise your hands now thank you praise the Lord praise Jesus Let's close now this service with a prayer. Holy Father, Lord God, in the name of the Son, Jesus Christ, we thank and praise thy holy name. Lord and God, for pouring out thy Holy Spirit, O Lord, bringing these souls, O God, to receive the salvation that you so freely give us, O Lord, this free gift of salvation. Lord and God, baptize them now with thy Holy Spirit. Lord and God, another free gift that you have for each and every one who believes. Lord and God, keep them, O God. Yea, Lord, use them in a great and mighty way. Heavenly Father, keep them in my muddy nail-scarred hand. Lord and God, use them, O Lord. Let them accomplish something for you every day of their lives. Heavenly Father, thank and praise our holy name. Lord, for Alberto Rivera here, the coming, O Lord and God, this evening, O God. For this wonderful message, O God, to deliver to each and every one of us. Holy Father. Bring us all together, Lord and God. Yea, Lord, to gather together again, O Lord, to serve and worship you, O Holy Father. Lord, we thank and praise our holy name. Bless the food, those who prepared it and those who brought it up the hill. Yea, Lord and God, and bless all the visiting Christians here, O Lord and God. Keep a wall fire around and about them. Protect them, O Lord, give them traveling grace. Lord and God, if there's any here who have not accepted you as their personal Savior, convict them, O God. Yea, Lord and God, pour out thy spirit of conviction upon them and trouble them before us eternally everlasting too late, so they accept you as their personal Savior. 
We give you all the praise and the thanks and the glory and honor in Jesus' holy name. Dismiss us now in thy spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. May I? I will not take more time than is necessary. I know you come from far places, and I've been trying to be under the assistance of the Spirit of the Lord as brief as possible. But I would like to do something, and this is what I call at the end a request. A reminder, I will say, because you know what I'm saying, and I'm sure you are doing what I'm requesting. You must pray, with earnest prayed for our brother Tony Alamo. You must preserve him before the Lord, day and night. Your prayers before the Lord, day and night. Certainly, this man has been under the conspiracy of this order, and I knew that conspiracy before I became a Christian against his life, his wife, and the ministry. Let me tell you that now is coming to be known what I even knew without knowing them. Certainly, he has taken now a stronger position as the day go by, that is the character of Christ's church. We are not weaker, we are stronger as the days go by. The current of the world could not swallow up, but there are many are being swallowed by the current of this world. But we have to be the light of the world. You prayed as you have done, I'm sure, but that is just a reminder. Yes, do it in the name of the Lord.